This is the daily video update for the Unitarian Church of Lincoln. All this week, uh, we're playing excerpts of a conversation that I had with the Reverend Kara Rockhill, an old friend of mine from seminary. Kara and I talked six months ago near the beginning of the pandemic about what ministry looked like in Massachusetts and in Lincoln, and we're revisiting our conversation uh, from back then and, and how things have evolved uh, in, in both of our contexts since then. Oh, man. Oh, I miss you, buddy. I know. It's been, it's been too long. I'm sorry I couldn't get up for your ordination. I was very poor. That happens. I still can't say that I'm not. I live in Cambridge, so my not great paycheck goes to rent, but... Um, yeah. Well... I, it's better than it was. But, you know, we'll have... I don't know. We gotta get you and... In theory. You and yours out here. At some point, Amy loves <laughs> hiking. Um, and I can't imagine there's a ton of that in Nebraska. But perhaps we can incorporate a visit with you all. Yeah. Well, we're like, we're the next town over from Denver. Are you? Yeah. How far are you from Denver? It's about an eight-hour drive. That's doable. I mean, there's, there's not... <laughs> Ooh, we will cut that. Um, there's very little in that eight hours um, as you go west through through Nebraska, um, but uh, I'm, I'm about well, to be we, we... on the comments by somebody who's. Uh, but we're we are the next sort of major town down I-80 from Denver. So I, I should say. Uh to to the gathered masses watching this that one big thing that did happen in this uh quarantine is that i climbed my first mountain yeah uh, i climbed mount hunger in vermont uh, i am not a hiker uh, i grew up on the beach uh, in, in southern maryland uh, it's, there are hills but it's pretty flat really uh, Amy is essentially a mountain goat in human form uh, and can climb and scramble up just about anything. Uh, so I've been practicing in our time together and, and um, we attempted pretty early on in our dating to get me up Mount, Cl Mount Hunger. It did not go well uh, and abandoned, abandoned course. Uh, and so we, a few years later, tried again. And, and um, about two thirds, three quarters of the way up, I was like, I should turn around now. I'm pretty tired. I'm real tired, but uh, we're so close. And so we, we climbed it uh, and I didn't realize that getting down was as hard as getting up with the exception that you can breathe better. But like, like it uses more muscles. So anyway, I'm imagining that a climbing trip to Colorado will be in the future at some point. Uh, and I'd be happy to have me in the cornfield halfway. Uh, oh. Sounds great. Yep. It'd be nice to see you. Meet, meet the tiny human. Yeah, she's not so tiny anymore. And the dog. I actually oh, really want to meet the dog, too. Yeah, that's, that's fair. How are your puppies? They feel pretty good. Uh, they are really enjoying the fact that we're always here. Yeah. Like that, that one human is almost always here is really great for them. Uh, yeah. So they're good. It took at first with the, the quarantine, I don't know about anybody else's dogs, but at first there were a couple of days, but they were just like, why are you still here? Yeah. Like you, you have been here constantly for like two weeks and I need some alone time. Uh, and um, but that all changed. Amy and I went for a hike, and this was like, I mean it was like March or early April. We went for a little hike, and came back you know like three or four hours later, and the dogs were like, "Never leave again." And ever since they've been like, "We miss you all the time. Please snuggle." Um, so they've been great. They're getting along. They they both put on some weight in quarantine, uh, but you know most people did. So, yeah. yeah, no, everything's, you know. Yeah, well, you know, if the job's figuring that out, at least you and I will have plenty to do for the rest of our careers. Yeah, right? 
Yeah, I think um, I've often like worried about what will happen if if civil war, if the apocalypse comes and all hell breaks loose. Uh, like it's like I'm a I'm a liability, right? Like I can't climb mountains. We've we've discussed that. I'm not fast. Uh, I I I can grow a garden, and I'm reasonably charismatic. Like I can talk to people, right? That's those are my my zombie apocalypse skills. I can't even tie a knot. Like I'm I'm in I'm in trouble. But um, I'm reminded, and I think this applies to you too, though you are a Spartan, so you're in better shape. Um, that that being able to help people find meaning in life. <laughs> when everything is in chaos will probably be continue to be a marketable skill. Oh. So that's, that's good. Let's hope, let's hope we can continue to do that yeah. for ourselves and then for others as well. Yeah. Well, it's theologically consistent. Yeah. Uh, what is it? What's, would you say it was um, permanence and temporalness? The, yeah, we were talking about the, the transient and permanent in Christianity. Transient. So it's the this transient world where it literally everything's changing. What are the permanent things we can hold on to? And uh, I think I agree with your your Unitarian dude. Is that how do we love? How do we love each other? How do we love ourselves? Oh. Yes. It certainly should be permanent. Yeah. Uh, I'll go down swinging to make it that way. Hopefully not. We'll have more excerpts uh, from the conversation that Kara and I had as this week goes on. See you tomorrow. That's, that's scintillating. Um, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's getting cut, but okay, it's fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs>